So how is art department different from landscaping, Kurt? Well, it's not much, except for <laughs> this time we're shaping concrete. <laughs> For Movie 5 we wanted to feature a, a bunch of new locations we hadn't seen before and also return to some of our old staples but see them in their new state. We go back to Hammerheads but it's, it's ruined and it's burned down. We go back to the town where Merrick first goes on her adventures and again it, it's ruined, it's abandoned, the zombies, the marketplace is deserted. And then we also get to explore the archives or the catacombs beneath the city which the Thieves Guild use. We have a descent into the dungeon, a sort of a catacomb-like maze or labyrinth under the city. Now, this is a place that Dagon would have been familiar with in his early life, sort of his old stomping ground, a way of getting around the city undetected. The Thieves' Guild actually has a vault in these catacombs. It's a place where things that have been confiscated by the current government have been collected and preserved here like nowhere else. It's a place of old secrets. It would have previously been carefully guarded by the guild and kept secret from the city officials, but now that everyone's abandoned the city and dead, the archives have been left unguarded. But of course, the undead now inhabit parts of the city, and especially here down in the dark where the undead are most comfortable. Those that haven't left the city and marched on in Zorlok's army are sort of left here. Which way? We built a catacombs or grotto set, we called it, which was basically a series of tunnels which were pretty interchangeable. So we could block up ends, we could open up new entrances. So it feels like a whole subterranean area. Our production designers, Kurt and Lauren, did a fantastic job of making these modular set pieces that could be rearranged and it was all in a certain amount of square footage and then they'd rearrange it to make it look like it just wove in and out. But it was great, it was really good fun and we had, you know, actual torchlight in there and running through these hallways, being chased by the undead and finally making it into the archive room, into the vault. I love those days, those were a lot of fun actually. The attention to detail was, I don't know, I love that stuff, it was like a, a playground. Here we go everybody, quiet! Just trying not to, you know, start any sets on fire. That was that was the big thing on everybody's mind, was make sure you don't get that torch too close to uh, melt the walls. It was a set that could be moved around, basically a, a T with hallways, and then we could move the edges around to turn left or right or make a dead end. And Lauren, our production designer, put up on this wall, like here's step one of the grottos, two, three, and four. But we had a designer shots around which way they were in, and we were able to light in such a way where we could see the whole set and not see off the edge of the set. And then ultimately it led into the archives, which is in fact a different set that they built. The Archive Room is an interesting set. This world's been invaded by the Vitalian Empire. They have pretty much disposed of a lot of the old learning of the people they conquered. We wanted a place where a lot of that old world still existed. It also gave Dagon a chance to take the lead in an adventure. It also gave us a chance to see some rare and old and exciting things. And I really like what Lauren did there with the set in the end and burning it down was a good time too. We had some really real fire and real stuntmen on fire. That was a first for us, but our stunt crew, the CBR stunt team, they, they did a great job. They're very professional, very careful, and it makes for an exciting uh, set piece in the film. Hear me, gods! Your power fades as your worshippers die! Another of the set pieces we built was Zorlok's evil tower, which he kind of sits in and looks out over the world. We always imagined it almost growing out of the rock, that Zorlok shaped the earth itself and kind of carved this big tower out of the rock so he could look down, magically look down onto the land and kind of direct his evil work. I think Lauren did a great job. She built this big circular set, which had lots of interesting angular shapes and looked like it was made out of black volcanic rock, like a giant lava tube almost, which was exactly the feel that we were going for. 
We wanted it to reflect his personality, his dying and decrepit soul, uh, his darkness, this lonely place where he is ruling from or is commanding from. is very fitting for him. He comes and goes from there by teleportation or by dragon in sort of the loneliest way. And that's something true about Zorlok is that he's very inward looking. He's tied up in himself. And that's his downfall. He can't see things from anyone else's perspective. And his lonely tower is symbolic of that. The very last thing we filmed on Mythica 5 was actually the wall, which we start Thane off at. We wanted a place where people could make a last stand. And so it's this exterior city wall, which has kind of been barricaded off, and Thane and his army are going to make one last stand there against Zorlok's army. One reality we struggled with as filmmakers, uh, certainly from a budget standpoint, but also just from a storytelling standpoint, was how to reflect that the whole world is now in danger and the whole world is struggling against Zorlok and his armies. And to show that without very much money, and without the ability to have thousands of people or introducing lots of new characters, I felt that the wall served this really well. It felt uh, real to me. It felt like a place that had been sort of hobbled together as this gathering place in this last stand. It shows us the humanity, the human race coming together, but does so without detracting from the, the stories of our heroes. I wanted to open the film up with some big action and battle and do the least amount of cuts possible. And we were able to film inside the soundstage. We had 50 extras on there, plus our cast, live explosions, and we did this one sequence where I wanted to move with Thane as he went through all the battle. So I'm following him with the camera where we used every single extra and during it we had three live explosions that were pretty loud and we set the smoke alarm off multiple times. After each take, because there was so much smoke and dust, we'd have to open up the doors and air it all out. Basically, the timing had to be perfect for all 50 people to get it exactly right when you're doing stunts, flips, explosions. It took nine takes, but we made it and I don't think anyone got permanently hurt. So it worked out all right. It pretty much filled our entire warehouse where we were building our stages. We had to take a break from filming to give Lauren time to reset and rebuild and set up that whole sequence. So it was a, a wall on one side and a green screen on the other side. We got to reuse a lot of the old set pieces from past sets we had used. And uh, you know, if you look closely, you might be able to recognize a little, uh, I don't know, Look at it. Tell me what you recognize in there. They changed a lot. It was certainly the biggest set piece that we built for the Mythica series. I really love those sets. These later Mythica films really showcased the talents of our art department. Lauren Spaulding, our production designer, she really had a chance to expand the world and put her stamp on the world as we utilized a lot more sets rather than found locations. 